go ahead and uh, preach a message kind of piggybacking off of last week, maybe a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, we kind of came off of this, um, you know, battleground worship and this worship experience, spiritual warfare. There's a lot going on. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about spiritual warfare, but there's also, you know, a lot of truth. And I try not to attack everything that's wrong. I try to just preach what I know to be right. Um, you know, not necessarily that I'm right. Just FYI, right? Be a good Berean, search the scriptures to see if you know that those things that I say are true. But also at the same time, you know, you got to remember I'm learning as well. You know that my perceptions have changed in the last three to five years? No, no, really. I mean, it's like as I grow, things change. And if that's a problem, right, if you think that the pastor has it all down, you did hit play, right? We're good. Okay. If you think that's a problem, right, then, then let me just let you know that we're all at work in progress. We're all growing. We're all learning. We should all be coming greater in knowledge and understanding, being led into truth, right? The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to lead us into all truth. doesn't mean that because he leads us into all truth doesn't mean that we have all truth right away. Lead us in all truth. It takes an ever, uh, ever growing desire and uh, consistency in relationship with Him to uh, not only put some effort into reading that book. Relationship is two way, right? If you ever have, who's married in this place, right? If you're married or have a relationship, right? That's it. <laughs> okay. Nurse counseling after as well. Uh, uh, the, the, in a relationship, right, it is important that a relationship is two way, right? If, if, if you've ever been in a relationship that's only one way, it kind of gets a little stagnant and old, and you feel like, where's the feedback, right? Like, where, where, where is this going, right? There, there needs to be some, some, some uh, feedback here. And so, relationship um, is important, and anybody that wants to grow in Christ or know Christ, obviously has access to the Word and has access to the Spirit, right? If you be born again, right? And if you be born again and you have the Word, right? Um, uh, uh, Brother Dennis said that the Word without the Spirit will dry you up. The Spirit without the Word will blow you up. But the Spirit and the Word together in perfect unison will grow you up. Amen. 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 And so there's a, a balance in that. I've seen people who are super, super spiritual but have no root in them, no ground, no word in them, right? And they get, you know, kind of get a little, I don't know, flamboyant for the lack of a better term, right? And super spiritual, right? Or on the other hand, man, there's people that are super uh, more theological and been to seminary maybe, and I'm not downplaying seminary or anything like that. I have not been. FYI, I don't apologize. I'm sorry. I don't apologize. You can talk to him. But anyways, uh, but, you know, it's like, there are people that have, like, cerebral, the word, it's like they know it, like, inside and out. But I heard a minister mention one time, they say that, uh, that there will be some people that miss heaven by 18 inches. And what he was talking about and when he said that was from here to here. They, had, they, they miss heaven because they have it all here, but they haven't got it into here. Right? There's a living and active word that we have available to us. It's just as relevant today as it was back when it was written. You know, thousands of years ago. And yet here we, you know, there's people that kind of think, oh, that dusty old archaic book that has no relevance or anything like that. No, absolutely it has relevance today. And if you've ever read it and understand with the spirit, by the way, if you've ever read it and allow it to permeate the very essence of your being and to do what it's intended to do, which is to go into your soul and, and, and heal and root out and deliver and da -da -da -da, and all that stuff. Right? When it does that inside, there's a supernatural book that we're reading that we're putting our eyes on and it's doing something internally to us that manifests outwardly. Should manifest outwardly. Right. Amen? Amen. In our lives. So I always tell people this thing. You know, there's a lot of people that would think, I can never come to church. I just need to get cleaned up. No, no, hold on a second. You can't get cleaned up. <laughs> right? Without the Spirit of Christ. You can't. Amen. You might be able to quit something for a while. You might be able to do this for a while. People have strong willpower. I'm not talking about that. Right? You can do that. Right? But you cannot. But Romans chapter 7, right? The Apostle Paul said, uh, the things that I want to do, I can't do. And the things that I want to stop doing, I can't stop doing. Oh, wretched man that I am. Right? Oh, wretched man that I am. I can't stop doing this, right? But then, he, then Romans 8, he follows up really quickly. He says, but those who walk according to the Spirit." A whole different ballgame, right? When you get the spirit, 
in you, it changes everything. It changes everything. Right. Attitudes about sin, attitudes about him, attitudes about everything, about life in general and people begin to change. And I have to say begin to change because he who has began a good work in you will complete it until the day he comes and gets us. Right, according to Philippians. Yeah. Until the day he comes and gets us, he's going to continue to work inside of us and continue to do something deep inside of our hearts. Right? It takes a little effort, though, of course. Amen? Amen. But if you can put the title of the message up, uh, we are experiencing victory in this church. I just want to just kind of say this. I want to say we are experiencing victory. Coming off the heels of last week, I don't know if anybody who attends this ministry regularly or lives in this community or just was in attendance last weekend or just over the last several weeks, but there has been a shift. There's something that's happening. Um, yes. in, in this area, in this region, in my life, and I and I believe that there's a couple things that kind of um, give credence to that, right? Give credence to what I'm talking about. Okay, there's um, there is a lot of attack on a lot of our believers, a lot of our people here that attend this place. Um, there is attack. Now, anytime that you're going in the right direction and you're doing something against the kingdom of darkness and you're beginning to preach truth and you're beginning to move and you're beginning to do things the way that you would, right, coming off the heels of a spiritual warfare worship night, amen, who worship him in spirit and in truth, then I don't expect anything less. Right. I don't expect anything less. Amen. I, I just don't. I, it, it doesn't surprise me. You know what I mean? It doesn't surprise me. And actually, I think at the end, at the end of last week's service, I said, be on guard, right? And so, um, when I said be on guard, I was talking about this. Watch your homes, watch your marriage, watch, you know, be graceful with one another and merciful and be careful of our own spirit. I noticed me this last week do some things that were out of character that just I haven't done in a while. Just FYI. I'm a transparent preacher. I just like to just kind of just play. I'm, these are shoulder blades, these aren't angel blades, all right? So he's holy, I'm not. Amen? <laughs> it's just like moving into holiness. Hey, uh, road rage, man, not the best of you this week. I was mad. Okay, somebody just, yeah. I was ready to, yeah. Anyways. You know what I mean? It's just like, just this, this irritating thing just kind of like caught a hold of me. This guy was like flying by me. You know, tries to pass you at the end of a double lane or something like that. And tries to squeeze it right at the end, but he's not going to get any further anyways. And it's like, what are we doing here? You know? It's like, you know, it's like, what's going on? And so, you know, it's just like I notice things like that, and there's things going on. And it's like, and I also notice things, I've been praying for us, I've been praying for you, and I also notice things as well. I kind of see things, and whether, yeah, I don't know what you want to call it. I mean, it's like, I don't know if the Lord's speaking to me or whatever, but it's just like, just be on guard, right? And just be very merciful and graceful with one another, because we need that. This ministry is changing people's lives, whether it be on Monday nights, whether it be on, you know, pastor throughs. We get a lot of passing throughs. We're in Copperopolis, right? People come here, they have vacation homes or whatever. They kind of stop in and stop out. So now we don't even see them again or whatever the case may be. But this ministry is doing things. We've got an online presence and people are seeing some of the messages and everything like that. I am getting uh, text messages from some of our uh, mature believers, I call them. Mature believers. People that have been walking with the Lord for a long time. They're like, Man, you'll never believe God shared something with me. Like, he did something so amazing last week inside of my heart. You know, and it's like, I'm hearing that from Aaron. Aaron mentioned something a couple weeks ago. And it's like, oh my gosh. It's like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's what I want. I want that for everyone, right? I want to see God's blessing, not only in that moment of elation, but here in the land of the living as well. Amen. I want people to walk in the blessing of the Lord by applying his word and walking out his word to the best of our ability. Right? To be able to see his hand move in our lives and our families and do that. Now, that is not, I am not the uh, sugar puff preacher, right? That all things good and all things rosy. Listen, it's going to come with, you know, resistance. Right? What is it? What's the message? Be the yellowfish? Be the goldfish. Be the yellowfish. Right, Linda? Right? We had that message a while back, right? We're going to swim against the, against the grain, right? All the other fish are going one direction, but we're going to be swimming against the grain. We're going to do things a little bit differently, right? We're going to do things the way 
that the, the Lord leads us to do and the Spirit of the Lord follow, uh, leads us to do. We want to follow Him. We do not want this to be a ministry. Woe to us if we get into a place where we're just checking in, checking out. Right? Glad we came. Sunday service, we had it. Nuh-uh. No, we want impact in people's lives, hearts, deliverance, set free, moving forward in the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 And so people are being changed. People's lives are being changed. Uh, we are making a dent in the unseen realm. We are doing something different. <laughs> and the same one that got us here, the same one that uh, allowed us to be in this position and to have the influence that we have in the people's lives that attend this ministry or there of, right, outside of that, is the only one that will keep us here. The one that got us here is the only one that will keep us here. Right. This isn't us. This is all Him. We're just yielding ourselves to Him. Amen? Mm -hmm. We're yielding ourselves to Him and allowing Him to use us the way that He wants. The things that we've been preaching, be, please, whenever we have meetings, we, you know, it's, a, it's like on Wednesday nights, right? We're, we're talking about things and everything like that. It's like, man, I wish more people would attend. Not because of my ego and I want people to, you know, more people here because I'm excited about that. I can care less about that. What I want is because we're going somewhere as a family. You know, I want to see people's lives impacted and changed. And there's some things happening inside of these services that I can't. I only have access to some people once a week, right? If you're serious about ministry, right? And I believe that this is, my role is equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, right? The fivefold ministry is for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. right? We equip you to be a part of what we're doing and having an impact in our community and the influence that God allows us to have. Amen? Amen. 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 So the one that God is here is the one that's going to keep us here. And so what happens is, is there's this, you know, this level of, um, you know, always this pride wants to seep in. I heard this one pastor, I can't even remember where it came from, but it's just something that echoes inside of my heart or something I heard a while ago. So please, I can't even quote the source. But he had talked about this um, impact he had in Russia when he was going and doing ministry in another place. And he was going into Russia, and they, they were, uh, the worship team had had an amazing night of worship. They were in a place that's very oppressive, really isn't friendly to the gospel, right? And they're out there, and they're, you know, I don't know the, 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 you know, the, the context of the worship service, but they had this really awesome worship service where they were doing it in a, in a couple nights consecutive. Right, going in a couple nights in a row, and they um, they had one amazing night, and then they had the following night where they fell flat on their face, so to speak, right? Where it just wasn't as good. And the answer was basically the thought was is that there was no prayer behind it, no reliance on Him. There was a little bit of a self-inflation, right, that had occurred, right, in, inside of that. And I think sometimes the Lord, right, when He doesn't get behind something, it's just a lesson that we have to learn sometimes. I've experienced right here, I don't know if anybody's ever noticed it, but I've experienced right in full transparency, I've experienced it right here, right? Where I'm not in, you know, uh, prayer, or I'm, you know, kind of not as ready as I'd like to be, or something like that, and I just don't feel the anointing as I normally would, you know what I mean? Have you ever I tried to operate and work and do something for the Lord when you operate outside of an anointing? Have you ever done that? Yeah. And when you're kind of like, it's just like, in the back of your mind, it's like, you fake it till you make it, <laughs> you know? It's like, I just got to do it, right? It's like, what are you going to do, right? I don't know if I would do that again. I think I'd rather just humble myself. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think I'd rather just humble myself. You know what I mean? The experience is trying to show me, maybe I could just humble myself and allow God to be God, even if I have to just cut it off and just be honest with you and just say, hey, it's just not there today. You know what I mean? And so as we, as we move forward in this, man, we're not done. We have touched the tip of the iceberg of what God is going to do in this ministry, through this ministry, and in this community, Amen. and in our lives. Amen? Amen. I'm still convinced of that. 1,000%. 1,000 were a percentage. I don't know. Yeah. Extra credit. Okay, so, yeah, really awesome things going on. But we've got to be all in, right? We get to choose how much we want to participate in that. Amen?
So people are being attacked, people are kind of going through some things, people are going through some challenges, difficulties. Part for the course, welcome to the gospel, right? Amen. X on your back, you love Jesus Christ, here it is there, right? That's just kind of how it is. I'm just like, I'd rather prepare you and just be kind of full, fully honest with you. Let's just start right there. So this message about how low can you go, I can tell you this, at 8.30 this morning, I was in a completely different direction than the Lord shifted at 8.30 this morning. Two hours before the message this morning. I never get my messages until Sunday morning. Um, I do not want to make a wreck of myself Saturday thinking about it all day. So I was like, how low can you go? How low can we go, right? Because you know that the, the, the kingdom is a kingdom of opposites, right? The kingdom that we serve and the kingdom of the God that we serve is a God of opposites, right? Through death comes life, right? Through humility comes exaltation, right? Through uh, weakness comes strength, right? So all these things are available to us, but how do we want to approach it and how low do we want to... I'm, I'm not going to do it because I can't. <laughs> but how low do we want to go? I can't physically. I can't. It would be... It would be a miracle of Almighty God. I, mean, right? I know you're thinking limbo, but that's just not going to happen. Okay? So, how low can you go? Amen? Amen. I'm going to get right into some points here. If you're new here, usually I kind of do some points to help keep me on track. What many of you who have been here for a long period of time notice that I'm not going to do is I'm not going to start it off with a scripture. As a matter of fact, you'll see zero scripture up here today. Please know this. Today's message, I believe, will be riddled with scripture. Okay, so this is not a non-scriptural church, okay? Um, I, I can just see some people, right, they go, no, there's no scripture. He didn't even lead off the scripture. <laughs> hey, trust me. We can talk about it later if you want, or it's okay. I trust the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 How low can you go? Man, I don't know. Like I said, if you've got any kind of... Uh, uh, premonition about what this ministry is about. It's like, I just want to do this fully. That's just me. I just want to do this completely and fully to the best, I mean, you know, to, to, to what I can handle, right? To what I can handle. I want to serve God. I like, like, my mind is that motive, that picture is eternity in mind. Like, I want all the crowns I can get. I want to experience eternity to the, the, the level I can. I want to serve God with everything I got because everything I do right now is going to be something that I get to experience then, right? And I think that I could, uh, I can kind of squeak in if I want, right? <laughs> I can kind of slide right in, and I'm sure you know that, you know, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, absolutely, amen. But, you know, there's something that you read about, you know, these crowns that are giving, are given for different, different things. I think there's six or seven of them. Seven sounds more biblical, um, so I'll say that. But there's seven crowns that are given for um, the, the things that you do and the operate that you that you operate and that you're given the rewards that you need to do. As a matter of fact, it says that in the kingdom, in the, in in in, uh, in, uh, in Revelation, it says that we'll be throwing our crowns at his feet, mm -hmm. right? Literally throwing them down at his feet because of how awesome he is. We'll be just saying, Jesus, I only have this because of you. You you are the one that made this possible. I thank you for the reward, but you know what? It's all of you. But it's okay, I want any of this, right? I still, I still want one. I still want the crown, but I think you should too. And it's like, it's like because it's a, it's a heart that's set on eternity, right? An, an eternal perspective. A perspective that says that this life is here now and gone tomorrow. It's like that. It's just, it, it can be gone in a minute, right? Our life can be required of us at any minute. And so right now is the time to live for them. Right now is the time to live for them. It's never too late to start. You can always start right now. And you can give everything you got for him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Intense? Radical. What happened the other way, Taylor? Amen. It makes me squirm, too, just so you know. <laughs> so... I get right into the, uh, the points here. Um, point number one: For how low can you go? First, I want to talk about he can relate to the challenges you go through. Because I was going to use this scripture to kick off. You know, everybody knows Hebrews chapter four, verses I want to say thirteen through sixteen, something like that. He's a high priest who 
was touched with the experience of our infirmities and those types of things. All right, so um, um, though he was God, now here's the understanding, right? This is the king that we serve. This is the, the, the awesome we serve. He gives, he gives us a pathway to the kingdom, to the, the opposite's kingdom, right? The, the death through life, the, the, the weakness, you get power, like, no, it's you get power through weakness, life through death, that's what I meant to say. Right? And so you have these things. But here's the thing, right? It would be totally different. My approach probably to this gospel and to this God that we serve would probably be different. I don't know. It would be hard to say. would probably be a little bit different if he were a God who sat upon the throne and said, this is what I did, and here it is, you know, deal with it, right? But here's what makes the God that we serve so much different, is that he became a man. He became a man and experienced all the things that we experience. The difficulties, the disappointments, the discouragements, the, 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 the temptation of sin, and the battle with uh, getting out of the will of the Lord. Did anybody in here sweat blood while they were praying this morning? Did anybody? Because Jesus did. Right? In the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was struggling with the will of God, when he was asking God the Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass for me. If you can accomplish it some other way, let's do it that way. <laughs> Nevertheless, what? Not my will, but your will be done. I haven't sweated under blood. I haven't struggled with God's will that much in my life. And I'm probably guessing that nobody here has. But here's the thing. This is what it tells us, Right? It tells us that he became a man and struggled with the things that we struggled with. He struggled with the things that we struggled with. Here's Hebrews 4, chapter uh, 4, verse 14 for you. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, right? Jesus, the Son of God, in case you're wondering who the high priest is, let us hold fast our confession, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. Somebody say, Jesus has been through it too. Come on. Jesus has been through it too. Amen. And I know that if you're going through it, I want you to know that the God that you serve and the things that you're going through and the challenges that you're facing I want you to understand that Jesus has been through it too. I want you to walk out of this place today, not recognize, not realize, no, no, that's not the right way to say it. I want you to walk out of this place not feeling alone and that you're in this alone. Right. This is a place of relationship, absolutely. And we got brothers and sisters and we want to disciple and we want to make disciples and we want to multiply and all those types of things. But I also want you to walk out of here going, I have a God that can relate with me. He's not Krishna or Buddha or any other false god who's still in the tomb. He's a god that resurrected in power after death and was in all ways tempted the ways that we are. It's vital. It's vital that we understand that. Because if we can get that, we can always remember that I'm not alone. That I'm not alone. I'm not in this alone. When you're in the middle of a hasty moment, when you're in the middle of a, of a, of a difficult decision, when you're in the middle of a, 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 a temptation, and you're like burning, your flesh is burning for something, right? And it's like you're trying to lay it down, and you're trying to pre present it to the cross, and you're going through it, right? I want you to know that Jesus did too. I want you to know that he did too. He went through it just like you and I go through it. And that to me is like, oh my gosh. That makes it so beautiful, right? Because here we go. We got the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lamb, right? That would take away the sin of the world. Who did this for me? Who is tempted in all ways like I am? And yet here, he did this for little old me. Philippians 2, 8 says this. And being found in the appearance as a man, he, Jesus, humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Here's your king. 
Here's the key. Dying on a cross. Right? And I always kind of found that scripture interesting because it says that he learned obedience mm -hmm. through the death of a cross. It's like, hold on a second. Jesus, God manifest flesh, learned obedience? I, he had to learn obedience? Yeah, the scripture says he had to learn obedience. Right? He had to learn obedience the way that we learn obedience. And we can learn obedience. This is why he says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father unless they come through me. Because he presented the way, the way of the cross, that we can learn to be obedient to if we would just take up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow him. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Our soul, I'll use, our, our, I'll use that, our soul, which is kind of our mind, will, and emotions. I mean, it's a really complex thing that's going on there. But for the sake of argument, I'm just going to say our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions, does not want to allow that. Our soul does not want to allow that. Why? Because of pride. Because of pride. Our pride, I don't care. Listen, pride does not discriminate. Pride does not discriminate. Us humbling this, ourselves before a holy, almighty, omnipotent God does not discriminate. You can be rich, you can be poor. You can be black, you can be white. You can be whatever you want to call it. I don't know. You can come from the wrong side of the tracks, and you can come from the right side of the tracks. It does not discriminate. Pride is not. It requires that we become humble in order to progress inside of him. He had to become humble. And we wonder, here is, right, here is the life of suffering, right? I mean, this is one of the message on suffering, and this isn't in my notes, and I didn't even really think about talking about this. But we talk about suffering at all, right? He who has ceased from sin has suffered in the flesh already. According to, I want to say Peter, somewhere in there. Right? But he who has ceased from sin has suffered in the flesh already. In other words, suffering is already tied to your denial of your flesh. Right? I'm not going to give my flesh what it wants. That's a, that's a form of suffering. People say we don't, we don't suffer persecution. We don't suffer. Yeah, we do in different ways. We do different ways. We're not a third world country. We don't have, you know, the oppressive... Uh, governments of China or Russia or anything like that. Yeah, there's different types of persecution, absolutely, right? And the way we have it, right, the, 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 the beautiful country that we live in that allows us to do what we're doing should be, um, you know, we should be filled with gratitude for what we get to do right here without the authorities coming down on us, right? But we do, yeah, filled with gratitude for what we get to do right here openly and freely without somebody kicking down our door, right? Amen. There's some people that don't do that, right? But we experience it in different ways, right? Anybody in here face rejection, slander? Anybody in here face loneliness? Have you ever felt lonely in a room full of people? Right? I've felt lonely in a room full of people. And here's the thing. This is what I want to get. Jesus, the high priest, experienced all the things that you experience as well. If you felt lonely, he felt lonely. If you've experienced slander, boy, did he. If you've experienced rejection, so is he. You know, my daughter dances. I mean, she's been dancing since, how old, man? She's about four or five years old. Four or five years old, my little girl, man. And sometimes she dances with a team, right? She gets up there and she dances as part of a team. And she'll get up there with five, six, seven people, something like that. Right? She'll be up there and she'll be dancing and everything like that. But she's also got up there solo with, what, 100, 200 people watching sometimes? Right? Roughly 100, 200 people. I've always told her, since she's this little big, I've always told her, you're not alone. You're not alone. Remember that you're not alone when you're up there. Remember that. Keep that in mind. Something I kind of always mentioned to her. Yeah, he walked through it. The struggle with flesh and the sin, 
Yeah, he walked, walked through it. Yet yeah, he was without sin. He was tempted, but did not get out of God's will. Boy, he wanted to. He offered it. He said, and it crossed his mind. He said, boy, 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 God, if you have another way, you can do this. If you have plan B, I'm all ears. Yet yeah, he didn't too. Don't ever let a temporary circumstance, this isn't this isn't a point, although it could be, and we'll probably use this on the down the road. But don't let a temporary circumstance allow you to make a permanent decision. Boy, have I heard that before. Come on. Don't let a temporary circumstance allow you to make a permanent decision. Amen. I'm paying for it now. I'm humbling myself for you. I'm paying for it now. My family's paying for it now. I'm not perfect. You know what I mean? Don't ever let a temporary circumstance allow you to make a permanent decision. And because he's relatable, and because he paved the way, point number two, we can humble ourselves, or God can humble us. Yeah. Have you ever heard me say, the great thing about being a kid is that he's our responsibility. I've usually said that in the context of him supplying all of our needs. Right? Absolutely. Right? We're his responsibility. If we go out, if we're a son or a daughter of the Most High God, he were adopted. The Bible says we're adopted out of his family, into his family, into his royal priesthood. We've been chosen out of this generation. We've been made in the likeness and the image of God, and we're his. And then because we um, uh, 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 chosen, uh, reciprocated the, the, the choice that he's chose for us, because we uh, choose him back, right? We have now become his responsibility, all right? And I've said that usually in the context of him meeting our needs, right? But I'll say that today also is that we're also his responsibility in how he humbles us. Make sure that we stay humble, right? Disciplines us or chastises us. We're also his responsibility in that regard as well. And here's the thing. Chastise is such a bad word. It's actually really good and loving and kind. For those of you who have kids in here or you're going to have kids in the future or anything like that, raising your kids with consistent and good discipline is appropriate and loving yeah. and kind. Right? It's like... That's what we do. It's important, right? Because it helps them to not act a fool when they get older, when it really counts, and the law comes after them, right? Like the things that they learn now is appropriate right, to, to let them know that there's boundaries that you have to operate in. And if you don't operate them, guess what? There's circ- uh, there's, there's uh, what's the word? Consequences. consequences for that, right? Consequences for operating outside of those boundaries. It's important, and God the Father does the same thing with us, right? When we're acting prideful, and I got this, and this is mine, the world is mine, Nike, let's do it, right? <laughs> like, hold on a second, pump the brakes, you're my cop, you're my kid. Hold on, you ain't going to represent me like that. Right. You ain't going to represent me like that. Nuh-uh. <laughs> Let me dial it up. Let <laughs> me figure it out, right? We can humble ourselves, or God can humble us. How low can you go? I can give a little analogy. I know that probably not everybody here is football savvy. I watch football. I like football. But I think I can make this relatable to some of Okay? If you know anything about football, there will be what we'll just use the offensive and defensive line. Okay? The offensive and defensive line. So we'll just say five on five for the sake of argument. Five people lined up on five people, hand in the ground, knee bent, ready for a snap, right? Ready for ready for something that's going to start a play, okay? They call that where they meet and they do battle, if you will, <laughs> right? They call that the trenches. They call that the trenches. I just learned, I've been watching football for 20 years, and I kind of got into it a little bit more. And I started watching things about football and everything like that. I just learned that he who wins in the trenches is the one who gets lowest. The one who can get the lowest is the one who wins. 
There's something about center of gravity and power and base and the, and the ability to overcome your opponent the lower you can get. In other words, you don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to be the smartest. But you have to have the right technique to get lower than your opponent. Because if you get lower than your opponent, you have a, a, a distinct advantage over strength, over that. Does that make sense when we're talking about how low can you go? Because if we want to win the enemy, if we want to do damage in this kingdom, we have to get lower. The answer, when we talk about spiritual warfare, right, and the things that we do, we talked about an arrow in the quiver this morning about Jesus, right? How about humility? Amen. Having humility and having an understanding of being able to humble ourselves low enough to get down low to where the enemy can't even get to us because we're under the shadow of the wing of the Almighty. We're under the protection of the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're so low, he can't resist us. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because human nature, this is why I say pride doesn't discriminate. Human nature is that we tend to be full of ourselves. Man, I was <laughs> a worldly guy, man, 15 years ago. Whatever it was. Right? Like, I wasn't even that tough. My wife just told me that we were talking about, I think we were talking about that. I think we were talking about the, the, the vehicle incident. My wife said, you can't fight. <laughs> I can't, right? I can't fight, right? Like we were talking about that, she goes, you can't fight. Right, I haven't done it in like 18 years. But before that, I used to fight all the time. All the time, right? Always got battle scarred, broken, been beat up, I beat up others, all that type of stuff, right? I've been in, there's so many times where I have not even been in fights because I learned the art of mean mode. <laughs> <laughs> you got this? I can't even do it right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I had stare downs that didn't even result in fights because people thought I was bad. It's like, it like a peacock, right? <laughs> So those of you who have a background of fighting know exactly what I'm talking about. You've done it too. <laughs> Try to act a little bigger than you really were, just so you're like, and deep down you're hoping, like, you're hoping this don't go down. <laughs> right? Oh, uh, yeah. I know. Let <laughs> we tend to be full of ourselves. It's human nature to kind of do that, to rise up, you know? What? You cut me off? What? <laughs> <laughs> but when we kind of get like that, don't we kind of tend to become the worst part of ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. We tend to become the worst part of ourselves when we allow that flesh, that emotion to rise up, and we allow that old man to kind of resurrect and kind of do some things. You know, we're, we're doing it usually out of insecurity, not an understanding of who we are in Christ, usually a lack of identity whatever the case may be, you can get to the root of whatever it is, right? That's what we want the Spirit to do here, right? Because there's healing and there's power and there's deliverance and all those things. But usually those things have a root, right? You can trail them back to where they are that allows us to get to do that, right? To get to those, get to those areas inside of your heart that, that, that gives you a firm foundation that you know who you are and it don't matter what they do. I don't care what you do to me. You hit me on the right cheek, here's the left. That's a humbling act to be able to do that. You hit me on the right cheek, yeah, it's like, hit me on the right cheek, it's like, you know, most people want to be like, okay, no, we're going fisticuffs, let's do this. You know what I mean? But how many of us could really say, hey, hit me on the right cheek, go ahead and have the left too? I'm not saying I'm there, I don't know. It would probably be very situational. And if my kids were involved, or my wife was involved. <laughs> Very transparent. Um, so, anyways, the animal kingdom is kind of like that too. It's very interesting. I'm going to read something. What time? Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to kind of. We're not going to speed it up, but we're going to speed it up. No, I'm not on time. You got to go to lunch. You can go to lunch. I'm going to read something out of this. You're not going to have the scripture up there, but I'm going to read this out of Daniel chapter four. 
I'm going to kind of go through this. I'll go through this kind of quickly. Because we have a, a, a great Old Testament story of what pride can do to you, of what pride can really do to an individual, right? So we have this character, well, everybody knows Shabbat, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, right, Belshazzar, who is in the Old Testament. This is a, the Babylonian captivity, just a little context for you. I'm not going to get into it too much. But there is this king, Nebuchadnezzar, who uh, is having some dreams. <coughs> And dreams can be interpreted, right? And, uh, it's a gift that the Lord gives to some people to be able to interpret dreams and to be able to share what those dreams mean and their intention and everything like that. Well, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, a very uh, uh, worldly king, if you will, he was definitely not of the spirit of Christ or anything like that, but he definitely had some war going on inside of him. And anyways, he um, had these, he orchestrated this captivity. He is the king of the kingdom of Babylon. Um, and he has um, elevated these Hebrew young men um, into a place of authority, power, and to operate under, near, near underneath him. And so Daniel was one of those, and Daniel um, uh, had the gift of being able to interpret dreams. So Nebuchadnezzar comes with this dream, and I'm not going to read the whole dream. I'm going to read Daniel's interpretation of it, because it will basically tell you what the dream was, okay, so for the sake of time. So Daniel 4, 19, I'm going to start there. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belshazzar, do not uh, let the dream, its interpretation, trouble you. Belshazzar answered and said, my lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, and here's the interpretation of the dream. The tree that you saw, which grew to be a strong tree, whose height reached in the heavens and which could be seen by all the earth. This is a picture. Okay, he's going to tell you. Never mind. Whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant, in which was found, uh, excuse me, was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and whose branches and the birds of the heavens have their home. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong in your greatness, has grown and reached the heavens and your dominion, to the end of the earth. In other words, he said he had a kingdom that encircled the earth. And it was a very mighty and powerful world kingdom. Uh, other interpretations of the dreams will say it was the first world kingdom, right? Uh, that was used in the scriptures to kind of say uh, that. And <clears throat> he was saying that you, the, key, the, the, the tree was representative of it, and all of the beasts, which are all of other kings of the earth, would nest in its trees. They would find comfort in it. They would find sustenance in it. And they would be, um, uh, you know, seen over all the earth. Okay? Verse 23. And as much as the king was, saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree. Oh. That is one that can, has the authority to chop it down. Um, and destroy it. But leave the stump and its root in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet in the dew of heaven, and let him graze the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon the Lord King. They all shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. Still, Daniel's talking to the king and telling him, you're going to be with the beasts of the field, okay? And they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven and hot. And seven times shall pass over you till you know the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Have you ever heard of the king's heart is in, the, mm -hmm. in his hands and he can do with it whatever he wants? Right? God's in control of all that's going on in here. So don't get overly concerned. Okay? God's in control. Yeah. God is covered. You do your part. You influence what you can influence. God's got the rest covered. The rest is his power. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 26. And as much as they gave command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come down, uh, heaven rule, uh, come down to know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be an enlightening of your prosperity. So basically, Daniel's saying, hey, you can have this great kingdom, 
There's going to be a time where you're going to get overly prideful. Your kingdom's going to be chopped down, taken from you. You're going to be set out in the, in the field. You're going to eat grass like an oxen. And this is how you're going to get humble. Okay? Verse 28. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the 12 months, he was walking. So 12 months later, right, after Daniel had interpreted that dream, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. And the king spoke and said this, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my, by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? It sounds a little inflated, right? Like, man, look what I did. Huh? Look at all this. Verse 31. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. Here's the chopping down the tree. Right? And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling place shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like an oxen, and seven times shall pass over you. I don't know exactly what seven times is, but anyway. So until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Now I'm not going to go over the rest. But you see what I'm saying, right? We can choose to humble ourselves, or God can choose to humble us. It's our choice. Right? We can humble ourselves. People say, oh, I'm so littered with pride. Yeah, I know. Okay, there's deliverance for you. Read your word, develop a relationship with Christ. He'll humble you. Amen? Yeah. Right? Invest in that relationship. But we try to do it our way, and we try to take credit for it. Right? Going back to that story about the worship team at the beginning of this, right? God's doing great things in this ministry. And I want them to continue to do great things in this ministry. It's our choice to make sure that we humble ourselves, humble ourselves one to another, serve one another, care for one another, love one another. Right? Point number three. Humility is always the quickest path to deliverance. Humility is the quickest path to deliverance. We don't say we want our way, but we want God's way. And when we say we need God, it's actually a very humbling act. When I see these people, this, this altar is always open during worship or during the Word. It's okay. But when I see people come up here, and their hearts genuinely are seeking out Christ, and they need to, to set themselves before God, and they're humbling themselves before God, it is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing, right, to present ourselves low before the Lord. To say, Lord, it's not me, it's you. I can't do this. I need you. I need to present this into your hands. You want to get through something. You want to not go around the mountain again. Right? Let go of it. Let God be the one who takes it. Let God be the one who fights the battle. You do not have to fight this world's battles right now. You, I know... I know that your gas isn't going as far. And neither is your check for your, your food. Uh, neither is mine. No, it's not, right? But he's in control. He's in control. Develop a relationship with him. Develop a financial covenant with him. He'll provide your needs. Develop an a, a, a adoption with him. Present yourself to the Lord and say, listen, Lord, I'm yours. you got to take care of me. You'll do whatever it is you need to do. Hebrews 4.16 says this, Let us therefore, finishing the Hebrews from earlier, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You can stand real quick. I'm going to hand this over to Taylor in just a second. But <clears throat> let us therefore come quickly, Aaron, you can come forward, please. Come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace in time of need. Here's the thing, right? We got all the mercy and all the grace that we want. We can get all the mercy and all the grace that we need from Him. We can get that from Him. The question is, is are we going to humble ourselves to be able to get it? Right? That's the access. That's the thing that drives God hard. That's the key that unlocks mercy and grace. We can come and we can come boldly. Not because of what we've done, not because of what we accomplished, not because I'm a pastor, not because 
uh, anything you do in service to him. It's not, that's not how. We come boldly to the throne room of grace to obtain mercy. We can obtain mercy and find grace in time of need because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And because of our recognition of who he is, we have access to him. We have access, all the access we need, all the mercy we need, all the grace we need. What is the mercy that we need? We need the mercy that God not give us what we deserve. I know what I deserve. I, it, it makes me sometimes as a pastor cringe. I know it's out of lack of knowledge maybe sometimes. But it's like, I deserve this. It's like, eh, you deserve death. <laughs> you know, I know what I deserve. I know what I deserve. I'm thankful I haven't got it. I'm thankful I haven't got it. Because if God would have given me what I would deserve, I would have never had a chance to receive him in the life that I live. Amen. The grace, man, when you keep failing God, when you keep fumbling in it, when you keep stumbling in it, when you keep messing up, like we all do, he will give you the grace you need to overcome it. He'll give you the strength you need to overcome it. Will you receive it? Will you humble yourself enough to receive it? Will we? I'll include myself. I'm sorry if I preach at you. I never want to be that guy. Will we, receive, will we humble ourselves enough to receive it? Because it's available. It's, you know the hardest thing sometimes as a pastor is? Is to see people that you know they need to and they don't. And it's like you're, like, you're very careful. You don't want to, hey, you need to humble yourself. You know what I mean? Unless you have that relationship to where you can do that, you really can't do that. But it's like sometimes it's like you've seen the Lord work, it's like you know, and it's like, man, you, you're going to have to walk around the mountain a little bit longer. You know, and I, it's just, you know, but you could, but this, you wouldn't have to walk in the wilderness for 40 years. You could make this an 11 day pass. Man, you could get right through this. Just humble ourselves. Just humble ourselves. If there's anyone in here that does not know Jesus as Lord, there's new faces here, some people I haven't seen. Thank you for coming. Bless you. If there's anyone here who does not know Jesus, please raise your hand. You want to know Jesus today? You want to make the Lord of your life? Is there anyone in here? Praise the Lord. Everybody knows Jesus. This off to Taylor and uh, close this down. If you can just pray. Just want to thank you guys for joining us. I pray that this message and the worship and back to you. Amen.
say it's the best time to be on board. Amen. Amen. We're going to touch on that too tomorrow night at Celebrate Recovery, just so you know, because uh, a lot of people would say, and I am closing, um, well, it doesn't show, I had somebody ask me this. It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that Jesus went through addiction. Jesus was offered a medicinal remedy when he was on the cross. They came up and handed it to him and asked him if he wanted a remedy to his pain. It was a painkiller. And he offered it to him on the cross and Jesus rejected it. And it was a mixture of vinegar and myrrh and other instances, but it was a remedy. It was a painkiller. He was even tempted in addiction. Trust me, trust pastor, when he says that he was tempted in every way. And we'll be touched on that tomorrow. It's not very recovery, but... Um, as we pray out, Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that the seed that you have sown today would land on fertile ground, God. Uh, I thank you that you have touched my heart, Lord, and that you have highlighted areas in my life, God, that uh, need to be addressed. I pray that pride would be shattered in the name of Jesus Christ, because it is the one thing that got the enemy kicked out of heaven. And it's the one thing that we don't want to try to go to the kingdom of heaven with. We thank you, Lord, for this day. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bless you. Have a good Sunday. Thank you.